Hey, I'm Adam with Adam's Water. And today, on today's episode of TIG Tuesday, I'm going to show you all how to run a TIG torch off an of engine drive or any stick of water. Okay, let's start off with the machine. Normally, to run stick, we have our stinger lead on the positive trunk. Well, to run a TIG off an of engine drive, you need it in DC electronegative, so we swap the stinger over to the negative side and put the ground clamp on the positive side. So now we turn to 180 degrees. You can see the one ground clamp that's hooked to our positive terminal now goes over to the stand over there that I'll have my workpiece on. And as you can see, my uh, stinger lead, which is connected to the negative terminal, runs over there. We've got our argon tank with our argon hose that feeds into a junction block. Which is right there. And there you can see the shop dog Max looking for stuff to eat off the floor. We've got our junction block inside of there that our steering lead connects to. That allows us to get our argon to that, that hose that feeds through it and our power from the junction block and the stinger lead. Now that runs up through this hose I've got coiled up here and goes to our TIG torch which is a valve style scratch start. Okay now I'm going to take this plate here I'm going to tack it together and fusion weld it together so in the next video I can show you all how to strike an arc and run a pad of beads on this in a lot more detail but for this video I'm just showing you the how it all goes together and the basics of what you can do with it in the next video I'll get into more detail about actually striking an arc with it so let's get started so this is scratch start TIG welding you have to actually strike the tungsten skin off against the workpiece to get it to strike so right here I'm about to attack these two plates together as you can see, I just take the tungsten on the TIG torch and I just strike it on the very edge of it where the two pieces meet and it lights up and it fuses the two pieces together. And you can see the heat effect zone around it isn't that big. So it's really a precise method for uh, welding two pieces of metal together. And that's one of the things I do like about TIG. I flip it around and I'm going to attack the other side now. I'm steadying with my hand and pinky on my other hand. Then get the fuse together. Both edges are fused. Now I'm going to do a simple fusion weld along the joint. So I strike off. It's a little windy right now, so it's blowing the door I'm leaning up against. Make it a little bit difficult to stay steady. As you can see, you can move across fusion welding these joints together really quickly. Right there, I got bumped by the wind a little bit. And I contaminated my tungsten right there a tiny bit, but it happens occasionally. You can just grind that little place out if you're doing a weld on a piece of work. I move on down, finish out the joint, get towards that edge fuse ends and I whip out of it like that. That's the only problem with scratch start is you don't really have a foot pedal so you just have to whip out and try to get back and shield the weld as best as you can. You're going to get a little bit of corrosion on the end of the weld but you can always either file that with a file or hit it with a grinder. As you can see the heat affected zone isn't really that wide. So that there was my first TIG weld with this welding machine. I don't think it came out too bad for my first weld. Got a little bit of tungsten right in the middle there, but for first weld, not bad with this machine. Well, 
Well, that's it for this week's Tig Tuesday. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and click that little bell icon. Until next Tuesday, keep on welding, folks.